let's go for a stroll good morning welcome sunrise stroll and chat at Magdal on the Sea of Galilee what an incredible sunrise and you won't believe the contrast we have I'm walking now so steady your step watch where you're going Ain't this beautiful? And we got to thank, thank the clouds, you know. Yesterday we had a 100% cloudless sky, zero clouds. Interesting when zero and 100% are the same thing. Zero clouds, 100% cloudless skies. And today, because of cloud, we have a different phenomenon. Good morning. Good morning. Great to have you back. The wind is kicking up so unusually, and I'll show you the reason for that in a little bit. But I want to catch the color on the water over here. I bet you it's going to be good. I was in a different spot this morning. Oh, there are the birds. And even Father Alonso, 81 years of age, is out taking his morning shot. He's on his way to celebrate Mass, and he'll be praying for you. Good morning, Father Alonso. Good morning, Father. <laughs> Everybody is saying hello, Father. Yes. <laughs> Look at the bougainvillea here at, at our little house. Rice, yeah, what we have to capture is the water as well. The, the water is beautiful. Well, there we got some of those birds again, but I missed them. Sorry about that, people. Let's just sit down here. Be careful how you sit down. There we go. I love this spot because the water comes right in here and it's pretty uniform. Let me just go over here a little bit to get this little bush here because it's lovely to see the light coming through this bush. Pray for us, Father Alonso. Now people, you won't believe the contrast you're going to see in a minute. So I'm going to go back to take a different position. And that cloud is going to progress there as well. It's going to eat up the sun in a little bit. But that's like, ooh, we got the birds. These guys are hard to get to fly by so fast in a little squadron. I call them my Paris fighter squadron, fighter jet squadron. Couldn't you stay looking at that for a long time? There are more birds. There we go. That sun is going to, that cloud is going to eat it up in the next 10 or 15 minutes. Let's see what happens. And now uh, we're going to, I want to show you something else very different. So let's go back again for our stroll to the position I was in. Way over there. And I want to show you something that will surprise you. Actually, it's not as good as it was 10 minutes ago, but it's still interesting. Can't give up on that sun there, people. Look at this little tree here. All the leaves are waving for you. Hello, Ontario. The leaves are saying, hello, Mexico. Eduardo Guerra, buenos dias. So look at this here. Look at these flowers. I didn't notice these ones. This is a new batch here. These are here for Mother's Day. Look at that, people. Oh, there we got our birds again.
Now people, are you ready to see something very different? Don't lose your balance. Keep looking up to the sky. Look at this people. Look at this. Look at this black. You know, it was actually more intense black about seven or eight minutes ago. It's windy, so there's a problem with the sound. It's not easy, but I found a little homemade trick. I'm wearing a hat string around my neck and the hat in front of me is making a shield for the microphone. So little tricks you learn as you go along. Maybe they can put that trick in the book at the University for Communications course, people who do those courses to train for this work. Oh, let's check out this window with this sunrise. Hey, we got those birds again. Hey, we caught them. <laughs> That's the longest catch I had with these birds ever. There, we got them, more of them. Gosh, they're out and, and uh, they're out celebrating the YouTube victory. Do you know what happened yesterday? I can't believe it. We started yesterday morning with 399 subscriptions on my YouTube channel. And guess what happened? It jumped to a thousand and something at 10.30 last night. And when I woke up this morning, it was over a thousand and seventy. So a huge, huge thank you for the incredible effort so many people made. And I want to give a special muchas gracias to people in Spain and in Mexico, because I'm absolutely conscious that they did a humongous effort yesterday. I'm sure there were other people involved. I know there was an Irish lady involved because she really approached her list and she was one of the ones that gave us that first big jump we had there earlier in the week. when we went from like 40 or 50 up to 300. And there were some others as well. Somebody in Germany was trying hard. And a couple of ladies in Spain did a lot last week. And then yesterday, in one day, all the way from, um, from um, 399 to uh, a thousand and something. I don't know what the final number was last night, but this morning it was it's over a thousand and seventy. I know that because the figures say that they round them out in face in uh, YouTube when they go over those kind of numbers. Let's get up closer here and check this out a little better. This little bird is up there greeting you, saying good morning, saying well done, YouTubers. These birds are amazing. I'd love to do a video on them if I could catch them. The, the way they train their little chicks that are so tiny and they're so defensive and so aggressive and so clever. They tease Soter so badly. They swoop down real close to her and she thinks she can catch them and she goes madly after them. And meanwhile, she has given up after two years of futile attempts to catch them. And they bring her away from their nest and their young. It's amazing. All the gifts that are in nature, the brilliance the intelligence that's programmed. I don't know what kind of a computer chip those birds have. Okay, people, so I want to, uh, time is flying here. And we're going to, to work a little bit on the text. And I don't know if you saw the title. First of all, I had a negative formulation of the title. And then I, it got turned around into a positive formulation, the best gift for Mother's Day. And that all happened this morning in the wee hours of the morning. I had a little rest from sleeping. You know, I was tired of sleeping, so I took a rest and a break. <laughs> and I read the scriptures today again. And something really struck me, and it's a very difficult theme. It's a very difficult theme for moms. And it's a terribly difficult theme for all human beings, and especially for peoples of faith and especially peoples of faith who are very close to each other in their faith. It's really amazing. Let's enjoy that little bit of sun before it's gone. And let's remember that we have terrible black clouds here. 
So people, you know, it's hard to catch a hot potato. And we use that metaphor for subjects we don't like handling. So I want to handle a hot potato today. It's very sensitive and I have one big request that if people quote some line I say, they do not quote it out of context. Because I'm dealing with really black clouds that came in and shut down a lot of sunrise. And that happens in families. What is the worst suffering a mother can have? I'm a little bit off angle here and uh, just be patient with me. What's the worst suffering a mother can have? And any family can have. It must be a suffering that Eve had. I'm, sh I'm sure of that. Imagine when Cain killed Abel. Who broke the news to Eve? How much Kleenex did she use? And maybe how much guilt she felt because this happens after the whole story with the famous apple. So, you know, this is a, a super sensitive thing, people. Division in the family. Breakage in the family. Because we're actually not made for that. Woo! Never saw that many of those birds together. They're really celebrating the YouTube success yesterday. So there goes the sun. You can see the light, but the sun is actually hidden by the cloud. You know, let me turn you back again here just to see how black this is. Because that must be the way Eve's heart was that morning or that evening when she heard about Cain. And she still had Cain and she no longer had Abel. And when that mother saw Cain come home after lots of remorse and probably not coming home, maybe he stayed away for a week, who knows. And she gave him an embrace with the tears of regret much bigger than his own regret because she was his mother. And the mother has that width of heart, that depth of heart, that sensitivity as a woman. Sometimes we men have a lot to learn there. It was amazing her suffering over Abel's loss, over Cain's broken disturbed, disrupted heart. How many mothers have had the same tears and the same heartbreak when they embrace their son who's in jail on all kinds of charges? Let us walk with these mothers to the shopping mall and they meet their friends and their son was just convicted and he's in jail. And let's walk with these mothers to visit the jail. And let's see their friends talking in a low voice so that she can't hear but she knows they're talking. It's a lonely, lonely path. How lonely, how sad, how painful, how sorrowful. We have that great concept, the mother of sorrows. In a way, Eve must have been an incredible mother of sorrows at the dawn of history. Where'd you go? Oh, I was trying to get a crow for you there, sorry. I hope you didn't get off balance. At the dawn of history, so much pain. 
and it hasn't stopped since then people all the immigrants all the refugees all the war victims all the victims of violence And I want to do a reading today with you, the first reading. And the Gospel reading, they both go together in very different ways. But they really go together to also give us hope. I'm going to sit down here, people, if you'd like to join me. Or if you want to go to another place, you better get another cameraman. Because I'm staying here. So the readings from the Acts of the Apostles have all the darkness and blackness of this cloud back here. And despite all the beauty, we can't escape that pain, that sadness, that seemingly futility. that puts such pain, injects such pain into the heart. So listen to this people, this is a very sensitive subject, it's even more sensitive in a way than what I've already talked about and that's hard to beat. Because it touches very deep sensitive nerves like my tooth the other day, it was crazy. Thank God it's under super control and on a great way of healing. And I didn't ha lose any sleep after being with the dentist uh, that night, yesterday, uh, the night before last. It was amazing. I couldn't believe it because he did such jackhammer work in there and he had to put in so much anti, what you call those stuff, uh, anesthesia, so many injections. And, and it's amazing. Like he expected me to have a lot of trouble there the other night and it didn't happen. So the Lord was good and it's amazing, you know. But the pain that's in the human wound today, the human family, over the division between Jews and Christians historically, 2,000 years. And I would label this not so much a pain between Jews and Christians, I would label it a pain of siblings. There's a famous proverb, the corruption of the best is the worst. And it's tough when f friendships break, but when siblings fight, it's ugly. It's ugly. So we have a prayer for mothers this weekend. The best gift I think for them will be if there's any need of any little tad of reconciliation, that's much more important in every family for Mother's Day than the most beautiful bouquet of flowers. That will ease her heart and her pain so much. Let us work on that. Look at the clouds getting darker and darker and darker. And what we have to do is to bring a little sunlight through those clouds like we saw the other morning. And you can still see it on the Facebook page. Uh, you can see the the sun coming through. Let's bring a little sunlight through for Mother's Day tomorrow. On the following Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy. Have siblings ever been jealous? And with violent abuse contradicted what Paul said. And Paul is just as much Jewish as they are. They are I mean, he was super Jewish. And he continued super Jewish and his entire writings are super Jewish. They're impossible to understand outside of super Jewish nature. In every way, we won't go into the details now because the time is flying. And Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, it was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first. But since you reject it and condemn yourselves, we now turn to the Gentiles. 
For the Lord has commanded us, I have made you a light to the Gentiles, that you may be an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth. The Gentiles were delighted when they heard this. They glorified the word of God and they came to believe. And the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region. And the text goes on further. And this is a very early part of the life of the church. And you're talking about the, the 40s. So it's like 10, 15 years after the crucifixion. I want you all guys to keep this in context, please. Listen to the earlier part of the tape if you just came in right now when you do a review. Because this stuff is explosive if it's used wrong. Dynamite can be used to create bombs and terrorism. And dynamite can be used to open up roadways through mountains and open up mines to find treasures. Let's use this dynamite with great discretion and great care. So the Jews, however, incited the women of prominence who were worshippers and the leading men of the city, and they stirred up a persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their territory. So Paul and Barnabas shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. And it says the disciples were filled with joy in the Holy Spirit. So we've had a very rough 2000 year history and it's absolutely impossible to deal with that in this short 28 minutes. So uh, let's have patience. Let's have a big context, people. And what's the beautiful thing about the time we're living in, even though we inherit 2000 years with lots of black clouds and hostilities, and very ugly chapters which discourage us immensely and humble us. We feel so humiliated, so shamed, so ashamed. But there's light coming and thank God in the last 50-60 years there has been a major, major effort at reconciliation and mutual understanding in course. And that's also with all the other religious groups in general. And I can speak as a Catholic priest for the Catholic Church. Uh, we're systematically, programmatically in that direction. And it's a whole process that's a long time to mature. It's very powerful. It's very important. And the little waves are coming to the shore all the time. And it's making a difference. And I have many instances to show you and to illustrate how that is. But the time again won't allow us to do that now. I would just like to say, we need, I would invite you to go on to read the Gospel reading because I want have time to cover it now. But it's about the Father. How Jesus and the Father are one. And this is where we have the unity. And it's great. And we talk about Father. And you can't talk about Father without Mother. And as we go into Mother's Day, my prayer for you is that you will also create some little wave in your family between now and the finish of Mother's Day tomorrow, that will be a moment of reconciliation. And it doesn't have to be dramatic. It doesn't have to be a big deal. It doesn't need a lot of planning. It just needs a lot of heart. To make a little gesture towards a sibling with whom I haven't really talked that much. How do you do during the coronavirus? Send an email, send a text. Uh, invite, well I'm not sure how much social distancing is still needed where you are, each person is in a different situation. But I encourage you, I encourage you, give that best present to your mom tomorrow. And as human beings on this earth, let, give us, let us give that present to our Heavenly Father who has a mother's heart as well. Because mothers didn't come from nowhere. So let us give that present to God tomorrow in thanksgiving for the extraordinary gift we have in our mothers and fathers that we will live more together in peace and harmony in a culture of encounter no matter what our difficult histories have been and with that word i wish you an incredibly blessed mother's day i thank you for all the youtube subscribers i invite you to spread the good news and let's keep sending in those waves everywhere to the shores of every family god bless you See you later.